So ladies and gentlemen, a hugely warm welcome to the rather wonderful Kane Manor in the equally wonderful Hampshire countryside for the wedding of Radley and Madeline. My name's Tony, my colleague today is Jackie and we are both registrars and members of the Hampshire Ceremonies team. It's not only our privilege, it's our absolute pleasure to be conducting this ceremony in this rather beautiful place that's been duly sanctioned by law for celebration of marriage. I have the easy job, I just get to stand up here and talk. My colleague Jackie's had to do all the hard work of doing all the legal and historical paperwork mm -hmm. ceremony today, but she also gets to ask and act as a witness, which I always think is a beautiful thing to do at a wedding. But before we get underway, I've got to get my couple to do a little bit of work. <laughs> and that is to give me their full names, and as is tradition, Bradley, we'll start with you first. Yeah. Could I have your full name, please? Bradley Ernest Phillips. Wonderful. I'm Madeline. Madeline Jane O'Kill. Excellent. But the right people, which I always find is very useful at the start of a wedding, so thank you. So over the last seven years, your relationship has developed and grown and gone from strength to strength. You've now made a decision to commit yourself to each other in front of your lovely family and friends. Marriage, marriage is really a promise that's made in the hearts of two people who trust the love that they find in one another. It's a place where you should be able to continue to grow and be your own independent self, and also to help in the development of each other into the future. I always think that really it's a statement to everyone in the room, but also to the wider world of something you already know, and that is that you have found so much love together that you wish to spend the rest of your lives together. And this brief little ceremony gives you the opportunity to, to truly celebrate your relationship and to offer each other the security that comes from legally binding vows sincerely made and faithfully kept. Now the civil marriage ceremony is the exchange of vows by the means of two declarations. The first my lovely couple will say that they are publicly free to marry and then they'll take each other as husband and wife. Marriage remains the union of two people voluntarily entered into for life to the exclusion of everybody else. It's a place where you should find comfort trust, loyalty, friendship, and I suppose above all else, love. It shouldn't be entered into lightly and it should never be lightly set aside. But before we begin, I must ask you, there's any person here present, and there's only just cause or lawful impediment right. to why this marriage should not take place, they must speak it now. Cool, that's quiet. <laughs> it's gonna be the quietest they're gonna be all day, you know, I know. And also, how nice is it to see a sea of smiling faces? The last two or three years, we've married an awful lot of masks. And you have no idea what people are doing behind those critters. But all I see is a sea of smiling faces, which I think means we're OK to continue. And we do so by going straight into the important bits, which are the vows and declarations. And the first declaration is one that says that you are publicly free to marry. And in this instance, I'm simply going to ask you to repeat after me Bradley, as is tradition, lucky man, you're going to go first. <laughs> so please repeat after me. I do solemnly declare. I do solemnly declare. That I know not. That I know not. Of any lawful impediment. Of any lawful impediment. Why I, Bradley Ernest Phillips. Why I, Bradley Ernest Phillips. May not be joined in matrimony. May not be joined in matrimony. Madeline Jane O'Kill. To Madeline Jane O'Kill. Well done, brilliantly done. And Madeline, please repeat after me. I do solemnly declare. I do solemnly declare. That I know not. That I know not. Of any lawful impediment. Of any lawful impediment. Why I, Madeline Jane O'Kill. Why I, Madeline Jane O'Kill. May not be joined in matrimony. May not be joined in matrimony. To Bradley Ernest Phillips. To Bradley Ernest Phillips. Wonderful. So that was a public declaration that says that you are free to marry, which is probably a good thing at a wedding. <laughs> we now come to the, the rather wonderful marriage vows themselves. Marriage, marriage isn't just a legal contract between you. It marks a hugely important milestone in your lives together because marriage is a real commitment. Everybody in this room is actually very privileged to witness what is a heart, a very private moment between two people as they commit themselves together for the future. Now I'm going to embarrass you thoroughly by saying, can you face each other? 
Oh, as much as you can. <laughs> Perfect, that'll do. <laughs> and I was going to ask you to hold hands, and you oh, beat me. Yep. <laughs> so well done. And the reason I ask you to do this is because marriage remains one of the very few verbal contracts. So the words that you say, you say to one another. But strangely enough, not me. <laughs> so Bradley, I'll start with you. Bradley, do you promise to love, comfort, and protect Madeline in good times and bad? bringing happiness and understanding and staying true to her for the rest of your lives together. I do. Right answer. Thank you. Please repeat after me. I, Bradley Ernest Phillips. I, Bradley Ernest Phillips. Take you, Madeline Jane O'Kill. Take you, Madeline Jane O'Kill. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. Beautiful. And Madeline, do you promise to love, comfort and protect Bradley in good times and bad? happiness and understanding and staying true to him for the rest of your lives together. I do. Please repeat after me. I'm Madeline Jane O'Kill. I'm Madeline Jane O'Kill. Take you, Bradley Ernest Phillips. Take you, Bradley Ernest Phillips. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. So those few words were said to one another no more than a handful. They're probably the most important words that you ever say to one another. Which brings us rather nicely to the exchange of rings. And we use rings because they're normally a perfect symbol. They're normally made up of a precious metal. And the symmetry signifies the perfection of true love. So whether you're together or apart, they remain a constant reminder of the vows and promises that you've just made to Now, Lewis, I'm full of hope you might have some rings for us. <laughs> Phew, that's always a good start. Um, Bradley, would you like to choose the ring that you think Madeline might like to wear? And just on the tip of the third finger of her left hand, please. And repeat after me. Madeline, I give you this ring. Madeline, I give you this ring. As a sign of my love for you. As a sign of my love for you. I promise to love you. I promise to love you. And cherish you. And cherish you. And be there when you need me most. And need, um, be there when you need me most. Should we see the fit? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, Madeline, I think we've got a limited choice. We like to choose a ring you think Bradley might like. Oh. And again, tip of the third finger of his left hand. Oh. Yeah. Can't turn anymore. Okay. After me. Bradley, I give you this ring. Bradley, I give you this ring. As a sign of my commitment. As a sign of my commitment. And my trust and my support. And my trust and my support. For all that you are. For all that you are. And all that you will become. And all that you will become. Shall we see if that one fits? Push it out. There you go. It's, yeah. Yes, it's <laughs> lovely. It's a little bit. Aren't they beautiful? How lovely. So, Bradley and Madeline, um, what is marriage? Marriage is the, it's the bringing together of two people. I always think that far more importantly, it's the forging of two hearts together. Now a good marriage thrives on love, whatever form that love may take, as long as you let it grow and deepen. There's absolutely no reason at all why your marriage should ever fail. I hope you're always able to talk to each other, talk things over. Especially when things aren't going so well, keep talking. Support each other's hopes and dreams. Maybe have the odd laugh along the way. I don't think that'd be too much of a problem. <laughs> but also enjoy rarer and sometimes more beautiful moments of quiet and peace. Plato once said that every heart sings a song which is incomplete until another heart whispers back. I actually prefer Neil Young's version, which is we all search for a heart of gold. <laughs> the other half that will make us a whole. Like notes coming together to make the most beautiful harmony or colours, making a truly perfect rainbow. I think we all search for a lifetime of, of sunny days, a lifetime of loving, giving, sharing, a lifetime of being together. So grow old together. Love, laugh, cry, dream together. Forgive and forget. Make the most of every day that you spend in this rather strange but still wonderful world in which we're living in. And wherever possible, 
just try and find the great and the good in the world. We live in a pretty dangerous place in the world. And I would love your obvious love and friendship just to be beacons of positivity that people can reflect upon. I mentioned hearts earlier. Hearts are really strange things. They're very, very easy to break and they're very rarely given. You have chosen to give each other your hearts. So don't be reckless with them. Hold them tight. Don't let them go. And above all else, just remain the greatest of friends. Because when everything else is gone, friendship is really what matters. Friendship transforms the everyday things that you have together and will make them really special. Those special things will just become truly wonderful. And I know that everybody in this room, probably in the wider world, wish you many, many wonderful, beautiful, magical years of married life ahead of you. And if a silly old registrar can ask for one favour, every now and then, just remind yourselves what it was that brought you to this beautiful place with all these fabulous people on this very, very special day. So Bradley and Madeline, you have made the vows and declarations required by law in front of your wonderful family and friends. And it gives me a huge amount of pleasure to say from this moment forward, you are indeed husband and wife and Bradley, I think you should greet your bride. But it's also a big grey envelope, which isn't probably going to be right if the photo's going out. Who would you like to trust it to? My dad. Yeah. Don't lose it. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, the um, observant tonight is our lovely couple of swap places. That's very traditional in Hampshire. It shows two families coming together. But actually, I always think far more importantly, it meant about 500 years ago, Bradley's sword arm would be free to protect the honour of his bride as he left you the rabble outside the way. But I'm a great believer in upholding tradition, which is why I'm going to ask if you're able, please be upstanding and greet our newest married couple, Mr. and Mrs. Phillips.
I'll only couple of decided that rather than you eating and then having speeches, you're going to go through the speeches first. But it's always my pleasure at a wedding that they've chosen me to be your Toastmaster. And I have a small gift that I normally pass out, which is, um, I don't know if you know the saying, something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. There's a final line for that, which is, and a silver sixpence for your shoe. Maddie, I'd like to present you with your sixpence. Okay, without further ado, I'll hand you over to Daniel. Hello, testing one, two. <laughs> I don't think it's working. <laughs> You've got it turned on. Oh, I don't know. Is it on? Yeah, it's on. You sure? <laughs> no. Nothing's happening up there. That's all right, I'll just speak. You okay? Yeah. Lewis might need it. Oh, there you go. Oh. Sunshine. No. <laughs> sort of. Hello. Uh, Hello, everyone. Well, you're a professional. Back the end of it. Don't worry. I don't know what's happened there, but... Hello, hello. There you go. Oh, well done. You turned it on. Thank you very much. Just trying to get the baby asleep. OK, well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to this, the wedding of our daughter, Maddie to Tracy and Ben's son, Bradley. Thank you to all of those who are here and to all those who have made this day so very special. And of course, that includes you, the guests, for sharing in this day to make it such an amazing occasion for Maddie and Bradley. Back in 2015, in the winter, Maddie returned from our family holiday in America to be swept off her feet by a young, clean-cut, good-looking chap called Bradley. <laughs> Incredibly, some seven years later, we find ourselves in the position today that the same clean-cut, good-looking chap has taken our daughter's hand in marriage. The bonus is we don't even have to pay a dowry to get rid of her. <laughs> Boom. Boom. <laughs> Bradley, you take into your family a wonderful young woman who growing up was always full of fun, life and colour. You take on a Hannah Montana fan, a Harry Potter fan and a Twilight fan. I do apologise now as you've had to sit through all those movies, though gladly, I guess we will get, always get used to getting you a gone fishing mug each birthday as she makes you watch Harry Potter for the hundredth time and so you'll want to go off fishing and couldn't blame you. Now watching the couple prepare for this day, it's obvious what a team they make. So I'm full of confidence as they move through life, they will greet every moment as a team and face every challenge as a team. On the subject of teams, this marriage does of course bring Bradley's family together with Maddie's. Having got to know both Tracy and Ben over the years, it's been a pleasure to do so, be it at a party, a barbecue, horse racing, which we did once, and a curry even. We've had some great moments and I'm sure we'll have many more. Also, seeing Bradley, that, by the way, so close to his brothers Lewis and Henry, it's wonderful to see the loyalty and respect they have for each other. I'm sure, like with our Max, they will make great uncles one day. But not too soon, you two. <laughs> Maddie, we love and cherish you so much. But we have such confidence in both this day and your future. So take your path and come to us, or Ben and Tracy, for any advice you need. But carry on being the amazing couple you already are, and there will be a lifetime of magical moments, celebrating and memories. So ladies and gentlemen, please raise your glasses for a toast to Maddie and Bradley. To Maddie and Bradley! Cheers! Stand up and talk person. However, if this turns out alright, I've been promised the best man position again at Bradley's next one. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told if I start to feel nervous during this, I should imagine that everyone in the room is naked. 
So, I'm looking round, and from what I can see, the bridesmaids are looking 10 out of 10. <laughs> For those that don't know me, I'm, I'm Lewis, Bradley's younger, slightly smaller, yet better looking brother. <laughs> From the day me and Bradley first met, we have been glued to each other and very similar in many ways. Some would say like twins. Mum even dressed us in identical clothes. <laughs> Growing up, we had our fair share of fights with each other, but it only ever ended one way, which was me winning every time. <laughs> Becoming both very competitive and Bradley being the old one, you'd think he'd be the dominant one of the two. But let me tell you some things about us. Bradley has never physically beat me at anything we've ever done together in our life. From fishing to football, go-karts to motocross, driving, and even being an electrician, I've always come out on top. <laughs> so even though I'm a younger brother, to him, in reality, I'm the, um, oh. Even though I'm the younger brother to him, in reality, I'm the bigger one of us. <laughs> for most of Bradley's life, he's been known for being the girl in the family. <laughs> to the extent that one year, Grandad Jim even brought him a pink tutu to wear to represent how much of a female he really is. <laughs> That's where the name Ballerina Bradley comes from. Would you believe me if I said after moving out a couple of years ago, Bradley still comes home twice a day to pick up the van and collect this packed lunch? <laughs> he even still gets dressed for work hours in the morning. <laughs> he then returns usually around 12 hours later where he decides to come in, slam the door and shout his loud mouth off, followed by dumping his lunch bag down in his dirty washing. <laughs> For the older woman in the room, keep an eye on Bradley as the night progresses. After a few drinks, Bradley seems to like an older lady as we found out in Tenerife on the sag bit. <laughs> By the way, I've let him off very lightly here and there's a lot of things I would love to say, but for now I'll let him enjoy his day. Right. On to Maddie's bit. <laughs> the first day Maddie turned up at my house all them years ago in her leopard print leggings, talking forever about having pet micro pigs and driving a pink Range Rover, I knew from that moment on this boy was in for a hard time. <laughs> and now he's in for a real hard life. <laughs> As time has passed, I can't see Bradley being with anyone else but you, Maddie. Simply because Bradley has never spoke to another girl other than you before in his life. So you've got nothing to worry about there. <laughs> I know today is about you two tying the knot and starting your own journey in life. But Bradley has always been mine. And today that doesn't change. <laughs> You're joining us two to make it a trio. So for the rest of your life, you're stuck with me as well, Maddie. I can't fail to mention how beautiful you look today, Maddie. And I must say, it makes a change from the usual trousers you wear every day in a relationship. <laughs> right. On to some thank yous. Saying all this, I couldn't have wished for a better older brother and sister-in-law. But I would like to confess though that when Bradley asked me to be best man, I, try, I had to try very hard to hold back the tears. <laughs> I would like to thank my amazing mum and dad who are constantly going above and beyond for us three boys and the people around us. If you know them, you know how special they really are. Big thanks to Maddie for organising this beautiful day without the help of Bradley and me, <laughs> and me stepping in when a real man was needed whilst Bradley was sleeping on the sofa. <laughs> Thanks to Dan and Carol for being there for Bradley and Maddie throughout this journey. So I would like to wish Bradley and Maddie a lifetime of happiness and joy. So can I please ask everyone to raise a glass and to congratulate the new Mr. and Mrs. Phillips. Afternoon everyone. 
for those of you who haven't had the pleasure, I'm Bradley, but no, I'm not, I'm Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ben, Bradley's dad. <laughs> Dear. Right. So it's less than a week ago that Bradley asked me if I'd like to do a speech. And before I could reply, Tracy said to me, Ben, no, I'm warning you, I'm sat next to you, I will stamp on your foot. <laughs> So with that, I'm going to stand over here. <laughs> Our firstborn, Bradley. Bradley Ernest Phillips. He did not stop crying from the day he was born. Even Tracy asked the nurses what's wrong with him. He hasn't stopped crying. <laughs> it lasted for about 18 months. But as time went on, and he found his voice, and the crying went from talking, unfortunately... <clears throat> The talking become louder and louder, and then everything was just shouting all the time. Like, Mom, Dad, all the time. <laughs> Bradley, growing up, you've made me so happy and proud from the boy to the man that you have, have become and everything that you have achieved. Doing well with your football, learning to re repair and ride your bikes, your cars, your fishing competition, being awarded student of the year at college, moving on to the apprenticeship, and then becoming, as he tells us, the best electrician. <laughs> <laughs> on only two occasions, I remember Bradley being quiet. One of them was when he brought Maddie home for the first time. <laughs> He was so quiet, we didn't hear, even hear him close the front door. And he stood there looking very shy and embarrassed. And then Maddie come round, said, hello, I'm Maddie, very nice to meet you. <laughs> oh no, she's as loud as Bradley. <laughs> what are we gonna do, Trace? <laughs> Where have I gone? I've lost my place now, hang on guys. Uh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Maddie, we think you're amazing and we all love you very much and you're very funny. Although you do have a little angry side to you at times. <laughs> One of them I'm going to share with you all was when we all went camping for the first time. And <laughs> Maddie was not impressed. <laughs> so the first morning we woke up and the first person to um, speak was Maddie. And it went something like this. Ben, you said this would be fun. <laughs> I'm freezing, I've had no sleep, I miss my bed and I want to go home. <laughs> you remember that? Oh yeah. <laughs> and the other time I remember when Bradley was quiet, so quiet, I came home from work and he was stood in the kitchen with his mum. And... <laughs> <laughs> I said, what's wrong, son? Nothing, not a word. I knew there was something seriously wrong. There's nothing from Bradley. It's very unusual. And Tracy said to me, he's got a problem down below. <laughs> what do you mean? What's wrong, son? Nothing, not a word. So we end up at A and E, don't we, Bradley? <laughs> We arrive and it's packed, absolutely heaving. So we get in the queue, and we stood in the queue for about 10 minutes, and the receptionist says to Bradley, what's your name and date of birth? Bradley Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the reason that you've been here today, Bradley? Not a word. He looks at me, she looks at me, I look at everybody in the room. <laughs> Brilliant, <laughs> payback. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, I couldn't bring myself to do it. So I whispered to the lady about his problem that he had down below. So if you do want to know what the problem was that he had down below, you'll have to ask him yourselves later. <laughs> okay, stag do. Where am I going to stand for this? <laughs> Not between me and Maddie. <laughs> no, yeah. no. no honestly, the, um, 
the stag do. I had an amazing time, it was absolutely brilliant. And well done to you, Lewis, for organising that for all 10 of us. You've done a great job there. It was absolutely brilliant. We had such fun, which I'm not going to go into all the details this evening. But what was really enjoyable was seeing now you and all your mates, Brandon, Callum, Sam, how you've all grown up to sensible young men. <coughs> As I said, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. <laughs> As I said, not a lot of details, so. Sam. <laughs> so, before we all raise our glasses to the amazing couple, Bradley and Maddie, and celebrate the evening together, I'd like to finish my speech off with giving Bradley something I'll give to him the moment he was born. I love you, Sam. <laughs> I'm not sure it was a good idea going last. <laughs> right, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you for all for joining us on our special day. It means the world to both of us to have each and every single one of you here today. Bridesmaids, I just want to say you all look absolutely lovely. You've done an amazing job. Thank you for being there for Maddie all, all the way. Groomsmen, your makeup looks amazing today. The makeup artist has worked wonders on you. <laughs> um, all jokes aside, it's been great to have you all by my side and it's been a pleasure to have you there. Mum and Dad, where do I start? Without you both, I wouldn't be standing here today. You may have become the man I am today and honestly there isn't enough words to describe you both. You are the most amazing parents any son could wish for. Thank you for the, all the support and advice you give our three boys endlessly. And mum, don't worry, I'm not going too far. I'll be round for one of your lovely meals or to drop my washing off soon. <laughs> <laughs> Carol and Dan, thank you both for everything you've done today. We really both appreciate it. Carol, thank you for being there for Maddie throughout this whole journey. Dan, thank you for letting me marry your wonderful daughter. I wouldn't have wished for a more, more loving and caring woman to marry. Thank you very much. Teddy, I think you're here somewhere in the room. <laughs> Little man, you just look as good as me today and you'll be standing up here one day. It'll be your turn. <laughs> and Elsie, you look like a real little princess, princess today. Thank you. And that brings me on to Maddie. Last but not least, save the best till last. Rewind 18 months ago when I asked you to marry me. My God, little did I know how much it was going to cost me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally spent out now, but you've still chosen to marry me. It must be true love. <laughs> All the endless days and nights you've spent preparing for our special day to make it as beautiful as today as it is. I just want to say thank you. You are the most beautiful woman I've ever met in my life, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for us. And on that note, I'm sure that everyone here today would agree with me, you look absolutely stunning. Here's to the next chapter in our lives. Would everyone like to stand and raise a glass to my beautiful wife? You say that, yeah. yeah. Here's to forever. Forever. Yeah.